They just said uh, we need to take her in as soon as possible. She needs emergency surgery. So I called Mike and they were running with Kenzie down the hall to the ICU and at that point I was literally on the phone with Mike chasing my daughter. So when she was born, she was diagnosed with a heart murmur and then they sent us to a pediatric cardiologist to just check things and make sure everything was good. And I thought, it's just a normal routine visit, same thing that I grew up with. It was just normal cardiology appointment. Once she got into the ICU, she, you know, she was treated by an intensive care physician that did, wasn't used to seeing congenital heart defects. Because he wasn't used to seeing the congenital heart defects, she was given medication that she shouldn't have been given, and from that point, we had a stable Kenzie, and the medication she was given sent her into cardiogenic shock. It wasn't just a matter of coming out of it, it was about a two to three week process. Um, from the time she was at Bronson, she was, um, they wanted a life flighter, but unfortunately, and we know this is a God thing, but um, it was the coldest night of the year and they couldn't run the helicopter. So uh, they, they sent one of the cardiology fellows to get her from the University of Michigan and we had a late night, midnight run to U of M chasing the ambulance that Kenzie was in. Longest three hours of our lives. They told me that I couldn't be in the same room with her, so they had to, so I had to leave. And as a new mom, that's all you want to do is be in the same room with your baby and be able to feed her. And I couldn't feed her either. Well, the surgery they performed um, went very, very well for her heart, and they fixed the narrowing in the aorta, which is the big vessel off of the heart, and that went fantastic. And the news coming out of the operating room from the surgeon. He was very pleased with it and you know, thought she would do great. Shortly thereafter, a few hours later, uh, they had noticed, because they always put chest tubes in these babies, um, that she was draining uh, an extreme amount of fluid and later found out that they had nicked what's called the thoracic duct, which is a major vessel in the chest wall, and they had trouble getting it stopped, which led to multiple surgical attempts to get it to stop given the fact that when you do lose all that fluid you lose your immunity you lose all your antibodies you basically lose all your nutrition um, she could not eat because of it so they had to give her IV calories the fourth surgery she had um, Dr. Beauvais came out and spoke with us and it was very disheartening um, for myself who does surgery when a surgeon comes out and admits to defeat and doesn't know what follow-up to do and what to do next. A guy who has seen pretty much every complication under the sun and he didn't know what to do. It he said he basically was, brought us to ground zero. We basically sat down and we just prayed and I think my mom was the first one that basically helped us realize that this is this is God's plan and you know she is a child of God and she is basically at his disposal and there's a purpose for all of this and we just have to give her to him and trust that he's going to do what he's going to do and we don't know his reasons uh, but we need to trust him. The surgeon Dr. Beauvais came back from vacation and out of the blue he comes to Jeanette and I and says, I may have one more trick up my sleeve. I don't know where he came up with it. He really never explained, you know, he just had been doing a lot of thinking about Kenzie and basically made the decision to feed her during surgery. Well, it was a really risky surgery. So, um, you know, honestly, it was either we'll see her at the end of this or we won't took her into surgery and um, when they were feeding her during surgery it took them about five minutes to find the leak and it was hidden apparently below the diaphragm 
and he tied it off and he said he didn't have enough suture in there to, to tie that vessel off. And the cool thing is they kept on feeding her and he spent an hour and a half in the operating room after he tied it off, sitting and waiting, making sure that there were no other leaks. All I remember is that he had a huge smile on his face. Yeah. That's, I don't remember what he said, but he, was, he had a smile bigger than mm -hmm. anything I've seen before and I think basically he... shook his fist like I won. Right. <laughs> we yeah. won. Yeah. <laughs> we just gave him a huge hug and he was just, we were all just elated. Yeah. What stuck out to me more than anything was the number of people we didn't even know. And we realized how many people were praying for us and praying for Kenzie and whole churches that were praying for, for us and Kenzie. And it was, it was amazing to see the power of prayer and the, you know, the amount of people as they shared our story with, with other people, um, just how, how much support we really had outside of our family. She's a firecracker. Um, all of the nurses at the hospital, when she was in the hospital, had said, this girl is feisty. And I said, no way, that's not my little Kenzie. She's just so weak and helpless. And she, to this day, is the biggest firecracker. She's three years old. She's never sat to watch an entire show. She's a busybody, but she is the most um, caring, thoughtful. The happiest, the happiest girl that I honestly have ever seen. She honestly is just, she's a gift from God that we don't deserve.